Brilliant. Thanks so much, Jen. Um, right. Hi, everybody, all 44 of you and growing. Uh, my name is Sophie. I am the project manager for the carbon calculator tool for, that Ad Green uh, have been creating over the last year or so. Um, I have got 45 minutes with you all, so I'm going to give a half hour presentation and then there'll be 15 minutes at the end um, for uh, questions and answers. So hopefully this will be um, useful for you. It's, as Jenna said, very much aimed at you all as suppliers, but I'm also conscious that some of you will be um, people who will be using the tool as well. So I'm gonna give you a full overview and then I'm gonna show you in detail each one of the different activity areas and all the forms that we're going to be or that people are going to be filling in um, and that will all become clear through the process of me going through the presentation so um, if you've been following our progress on previous webinars some of this will be familiar to you um, so i'm sorry for any repetition but this is the final tool now um, so it's worth noting that there will have been some changes since previous briefings um, I also want to say that we've worked really closely with a working group all the way through this development. So it has been created with a lot of industry love and support. Um, and so uh, I want you to know that it's been a collaborative process. So I'm going to share my screen uh, and hopefully you will see it. I'll click that one. So Jen, yeah, thumbs up. Thank you very much. Okay. So um, I'm going to give um, a little bit of background. I'm going to go through some process, then I will show you the website itself. So it'll take me just a couple of minutes to give this context, and then we'll dive straight into my web browser. So um, at Ad Green, a bit of background on us. Uh, we unite the advertising industry to eliminate the negative environmental effects of production. And this aligns with the Advertising Association's Ad Net Zero Climate Strategy and our collective goal of net zero by 2030. If you don't know about the, um, the Ad Net Zero Climate Strategy, it's definitely worth checking that out on their website. But we have two aims, which are to measure our carbon um, impact and then reduce it. Um, and we've got a strategic partnership with Albert, who are the um, similar organization, but in the um, broadcast industry. And they um, allow us to accelerate our progress, which I will explain in a little bit more detail. Uh, we're supported by uh, a great many industry trade bodies which come to us through the Advertising Association, and they are represented on our advisory board. And we're powered by a voluntary levy on ad spend. So the, the, what is keeping us going is um, a payment by participating advertisers, which is um, paid by the brands themselves and collected by the ad agencies. So that's how we're set up. The calculator itself, the reason that we're all here today, um, is based on measuring four activity areas. So we've got transport, spaces, materials and disposal. And this will allow people to build up a picture of the carbon impact of their production for advertising in these four key areas. The tool itself was designed by Alchemy Digital and developed by BAFTA Media Technology Limited. Um, and they're the same duo that created the Albert Carbon Calculator for the film and TV industry. So hundreds and thousands of pounds have been invested into Albert in time and resources during the past decade. They actually had their party last night, Jen was there. So uh, yeah, 10 years they've been going. Um, and in partnership with our working group, which includes members from companies such as Unilever, Adam and Eve DDB and Biscuit, some of you who may be here today or, or working with those as your team members, we've been working with them at Ad Green to uh, create this new bespoke user and security structure to essentially repurpose the Albert tool for the advertising industry. So if you've used the Albert calculator before, or you're working with any clients um, who have, then you will have a head start in this area because it's essentially the same, but your login process will look very different um, because of um, our very unique requirements in this particular industry. And I will go through that in some more detail as well. Uh, here, actually. So the tool is designed so that everyone working on a project can collaborate. 
And that's either by reviewing or contributing information into the tool. So companies represented above the dotted line, such as brand parents, the production consultancies and the agency parent companies will all be reviewers. And so they'll just be looking at the information and those facilitating the production, i.e. advertising agencies, production companies and production service companies, some of you who are here today or people that companies that you're working with, uh, will be able to contribute to collaboratively measuring the carbon impact of their projects by fitting into two category names. One of them is the principal production partner, that's the person who sets up the campaign, and then third party production partners who work with them on that footprint. And I've got another uh, image which explains that as well. So as you can see, it's usually the advertising agency who take the role of principal production partner, but sometimes it will be a production company. And sometimes it might be a photographer who's working as a production company. So there's gonna be all sorts of different kind of iterations of that, but one company or person will be um, the principal production partner setting up the campaign and all of the projects within it. They will be um, in these three categories, which are motion project, stills project, or audio project. And anything within each of those three categories will be under this project definition of a collection of activities resulting in content to be used for advertising purposes. That's for television, radio, magazine, social, point of sale, outdoor, digital. We're talking short form um, for social media or for television, anything that falls under the category, uh, advertising category. So hopefully that's clear. And then I'm gonna go in and give you a demonstration of the calculator itself. And Jen, let me know if there's any questions uh, in between that I need, because I can't see any of that. Um, but I'm hoping you can now see my account login page. Uh, bear with me while I just get my thing up, hang on a sec. Okay. So I'm just gonna give you a simple overview today. Um, we are recording this session, which I think we set up front anyway, but you will have a chance to have a look back at this if you want to later. We've also got a series of help videos on our website, which are already live. So there's nine of those and they cover various different areas. And we're also going to have um, a copy of, essentially it's the help text. And so it's um, a document that explains all of the different things that we are measuring. And that will be uploaded onto our website for people to download next week. And there's also access to the methodology as well, uh, which explains all of the factors going on behind this. And that's available to download through our website now as well. So there's a lot of information that's already out here. Um, and then I'm gonna kind of walk you through it now. So I'd say you don't need to take any notes particularly, you can come back and get this information if you want to later. Um, this is the login page. It's where everybody will start. And if you don't have an account yet, you will click here uh, to log in and get one. So uh, if your company has already registered, then you put in your first name, last name, email address, select your company by typing them in, um, and then you will find them and, and, and join. If your company isn't already registered, you'll need to click my company isn't on the list and fill in these details. Um, there are, five categories of companies that we can um, have as accounts on the tool. Those are ad agencies, brands, production companies, production consultancies, and service companies. And what you'll notice here is that suppliers do not feature. And so what we're asking is that um, companies such as um, a set hire company or a company who are a studio would not actually um, be using this tool uh, but what you will be doing is working with one of the companies in this category who are inputting the information into this tool and that is because we um, somebody needs to take charge of, of everything that's going in and also have an overview of um, all the information that's in there for the project that they're paying for. So although we're really keen for you all to have a, a chance to have a look in here and, and kind of um, see what's going on inside it, actually a lot of suppliers won't be physically using the tool. You'll be working with your production company or your agency um, in order to supply them with the information that they'll then be inputting. So that's how it works. 
Um, <coughs> I'm going to log in as a test user. Um, this is our staging site that I'm showing you here. So it's got some set up, uh, projects set up specifically for me to do demonstrations. So when I go in, you'll see that I've got a number of different accounts. Um, but if you are a, a user, say you are um, a production company um, who are uh, here today, you will see yourselves either as an admin role for a company that you're working with, or you will be a, a user. And so admins will see everything that is in that tool that's associated with the company and users will see just the things that um, they've been assigned to. So people will be assigned to particular projects or particular campaigns that they're working on as individuals. So I'm gonna go in as Cool Ad Agency, who are our dummy ad agency and just show you what it looks like here. Um, so this company are the principal production partner, which is what's noted here for quite a lot of different um, campaigns. And then down at the bottom, we've got uh, one campaign, which I'm gonna to come to. Actually, I'm gonna show you first of all, um, this is how to set up a new campaign. So if you want to uh, start a new campaign, this would be the page that you would come to. I'm gonna add a campaign. And this is the type of details that um, we are looking for. So we're looking for uh, the name, um, uh, the product type, and then we'll be assigning uh, brands and um, production consultancies at this point. So uh, for example, we'll be assigning Chris Burritos. They're already registered to use the tool, so they're popping up. And then I'm also going to assign Consult for You. Again, they're already registered to use the tool, so they've popped up and I can save that and I can close it. So that's just how to set up a campaign. But here is one that has been made earlier. So I've got three projects within this campaign and I can see they're in one in each of the categories, um, motion, stills and audio. And there could be any number of um, projects within the campaign under those categories. Um, they've got a unique identifying number. Um, I can see the carbon data in aggregate here already at the top and I can see the date of the information of uh, when it was started. But if I go in here and I have a look at the uh, campaign overview from this point of view, now I can start to see the carbon data. And this is an overview uh, down the bottom. We've got these same three projects. Uh, this is my campaign overview and I can see all the data from those three projects amalgamated here. And I can see the totals depending on uh, the different production partners that are working together on this. So we've got the ad agency, who are the principal production partner at the top. And then I've got the Wicked Production Company and Shoot in Scotland, who are working together on um, uh, various, not necessarily all, because they will just be um, assigned to whatever particular projects they're working on. So if I want to add a project, this would be the place that I would do it. I would click here and I'd fill in uh, the project details. This is where I pick whichever one it is. Um, we are really conscious that um, if it's a motion project, you might still be picking up some stills. So we're allowing for um, capturing the number of key visuals as well um, at this point. But we're asked people to choose um, whatever the hero thing is that you're capturing right from the very start here for your project type. Um, obviously, there's some dates here. We're, we're collecting budget information, we're collecting the duration, and we're collecting um, the content type. Now, this is because uh, later on down the line, we're going to be able to um, do various levels of reporting around this kind of information. So um, it's really, really helpful for us to know um, what um, as much information as possible. Um, uh, and then down the bottom, we can assign our uh, third party production partners. So again, these people are already registered to use the tool and um, I can assign them onto this particular new project. But anyway, I'm going to close that and move on. So um, one thing that I will just go to actually, if I want to uh, change who I've assigned, so these particular project here, I can uh, edit the project uh, and all the information. I can double check that I've got companies assigned. The admins for these companies will now be able to see everything that is related to that particular um, 
uh, it'll come up on their dashboard, but actually the individuals that I want to be included on this project, I will go to manage project users, and here I can put in individuals. So an individual user at the Wicked Production Company, I would invite them through this section. It's telling me now that the user already has access to the project. If I want to enter somebody who doesn't um, uh, exist already on the tool, then I would um, uh, just enter them through here as well um, and invite them. They don't have an account with Ad Green. They'll have an email sent to them to invite them to the project. So that's how you're going to be inviting new companies, new users to join um, through this process. So um, I am going to now show you the calculator tool itself. So uh, like I say, these are my three projects. Um, this is the carbon data. And if I go into this one in particular, I can have a look. And again, I've got my pie chart and I've got um, these uh, bar graphs here, but these are particular to this individual project. And at this point, I can start seeing what's being worked on. So the Cool Ad Agency have entered data for travel and transport, accommodation and post-production. And that's because that's what's appearing in their budget. And then this um, third party production partner that they're working with, the Wicked Production Company, they're entering data in non-filming spaces, materials, disposal and post-production because that's what's appearing in their budget. And then Shoot in Scotland are working on non-filming spaces, filming spaces and travel and transport. And that's because that's what's appearing in their budget. So if I want to go down and have a little look at what the actual calculator looks like down the bottom, um, I can see um, these four different, sorry, I've got seven different activity areas. So we've got non-filming spaces, filming spaces, travel and transport, accommodation, materials, disposal, and also post-production. And that is essentially what we're measuring. So I spoke right at the beginning about there being four main activity areas, but actually, um, we some of these have been separated out so um for example spaces is separated into non-filming spaces filming spaces and also accommodation and that's how it's been split across into seven in the calculator so i'm going to take you through each of these one by one and that's because you are all um uh suppliers and i'm guessing that you're here because you're interested in seeing exactly what we're measuring so um, one thing I will do just before I do that is explain that there is some help text available here uh, for everybody. Uh, and if you click on this at the top of each one of the sections or anywhere within the tool, um, it will give you a detailed help text. And that is what um, we will be um, sharing with you next week. So I've got a document where we're exporting all of this out of the tool and making it available as something that you can download and really have a good read if you would like to. Um, there's also a messages area if you're someone that's using the tool. Uh, you can uh, talk to other people who are collaborating on this particular footprint um, in this area. So uh, in we go to non-filming spaces. So uh, Everything that is being measured uh, comes across the top here. So non-filming spaces is being measured in terms of production office, home office, and other spaces. And if I want to add a new uh, non-filming space, this is what the form looks like. So I'm always going to give something a name. This will be the coordinator's home. I can choose the country, which is set to the location of the principal production partner. So in this case, they're based in the UK. Um, all of their forms will be starting from the UK and they're also in the West Midlands, but you can change that. This is a completely global tool. So it goes, I could be in Taiwan if I wanted to be. Um, I can add a note if I want to, and then I can select which one uh, of these three I'm working in. So uh, in this case, it's a production office and I will be measuring it in terms of uh, these categories here. So, um, and there's a bit of help text there if I want to. So electricity, is being measured by either a meter reading, or in this instance, actually, there is a, a benchmark option as well. So um, in some cases, uh, people will be able to put in uh, benchmarks based on um, preset 
um, formulas that are available and wherever they are available, they've been entered into the tool. Um, uh, these are all data sets that come from uh, recognized sources and we are constantly updating them um, and uh, making it as uh, kind of user friendly as possible. So in this case, um, we're going to say the benchmark is individual offices. I can choose how many people and for how many days. And at the bottom here, if there's ever um, something where we're working on electricity or energy related um, options for spaces, then I have the option to use, um, oh, excuse me, uh, certified green energy um, here. If I mark this at this point, uh, that will take me down to zero on my carbon footprint. So I will show you that if I do um, save it as a draft, um, it comes in at uh, 0.10297 tonnes of CO2e. If I then go back into this and um, change it to certified green energy, it's zero. So essentially what we're looking for a lot of the time with anything that has um, a level of power that's electricity based, certainly we're looking for 100% renewable energy. And that means that we'll be able to achieve a zero carbon footprint for that particular activity, which is ideal. Um, but there are uh, various um, other reasons. So and what I will say at this point is actually it's really important for us to still gather the data. So even if you know that you're on 100 percent renewable energy um, for our data collection purposes, ideally, we would still be receiving a meter reading. So although it's possible to measure everything in the tool based on these benchmarks, we would absolutely love to achieve a really quite a detailed picture of um, the energy uses, the usage that um, people have by um, being able to measure the consumption um, to as much detail as possible. So, for example, uh, we're looking at meter readings for electricity, for gas. Again, we've got meter readings and benchmarks um, for um, heat and steam. Uh, it's probably unlikely you're going to be doing that, I suppose. And then for generators, we're measuring by fuel. So what I'm going to do now is just go through and show you each one of these areas, because I'm really conscious about time and giving you some time to have some questions as well at the end of this. So if I go back. That was non filming spaces. It's the same concept all the way through. So filming spaces are measured by studio or location. And if I add a new one, I'm going to be asked to say um, whatever type it is, uh, where it is, whether it's a studio. And again, here I am, energy consumption, electricity and gas. I've got a benchmark, but ideally I would be doing it um, through a, a, a meter reading. And it's asking me about consumption and it would like to know the meters squared. Um, it's also got a number of other questions on this one, whether or not there's air conditioning, does it have a gallery, does it have LED lighting, there's all sorts of different factors that are included in bringing down that um, starting point to hopefully zero carbon when we get to the end. If we have in the, lo in the location area, we've got energy consumption. Um, and different fuels as well, including fuels used for cooking. So it's it's really quite detailed, but uh, essentially if you're kind of using any sort of energy, um, then we want to measure it. So uh, travel and transport, if I view this, um, we've got in here, I've got some flights and some trains already put in, and that's because I am um, comparing. But um, I've got air travel, road travel, rail travel, boat, couriers and freight all being measured in here. If I add a new one, um, it's, it shows me the different categories. So, for example, air travel, I'm measuring uh, by commercial flights and I want to know the distance. Uh, I can. I've also got a benchmark option here. I can do it by spend. Um, uh, on road travel, what the type of information people will be looking for is um, what type of vehicle you're using. Um, and it will give us a bit more information um, about the types of vehicle um, uh, so that we can really get a detailed idea of the footprint. Uh, we've got distance here and then a fuel type as well. So there's different ways of measuring it and there's quite a lot of uh, information that we're after, but what we're hoping is that people will start to um, kind of gather this information as standard 
and find their own ways of collecting it as well, because I know that lots of companies already have various spreadsheets and processes that they go through in order to be able to measure taxis on a project, for example. And it's perfectly fine to come here and just put in uh, taxis across the whole project in one input. We're not asking people to put in um, every single individual taxi into this tool. That's that's absolutely fine to do it in one go. Um, and then, um, but what we would like to know is for all the cars, all the coaches to be put in in one line item, for example, um, or all the regular taxis or all the black taxis and for them to be sorted into that kind of category. So I'm gonna go back and just quickly show you some of the others. Um, so what have we got here? Accommodation, if I view that, uh, this is quite an easy one. There's hotel types um, uh, or uh, houses because we recognize that sometimes people <coughs> are accommodated in houses nowadays with Airbnb. It's done on bedrooms, number of nights, and whether or not you've got certified green energy. That's quite an easy one. Um, and then um, materials. Now materials is a little bit more complicated because there's so many different um, options for this. We've got batteries, cardboard, food, glass, metal, paint, paper, plastics, textiles and timber that we're able to measure within this tool. And if I add a new uh, item, it's got all those different options. Now these are uh, pretty much all universally measured, bear with me, uh, it, by weight, uh, or dimensions um, and sometimes by type. So for example, with food, I can measure it by type here, the type of meal, um, but uh, paper, for example, is measured by uh, paper size and the number of reams. Um, and then we've got uh, batteries are measured by uh, the size of batteries and the quantity of batteries. Um, so these are all the different things. If you're doing timber, you might be doing a set build, um, then you can measure it by spend. Again, there's a benchmark in there, or ideally we'd be gathering more detail about the amount of timber that's used, the quantity and the dimensions of it. Uh, that is ideal for us to achieve a, a really clear picture of the carbon footprint. Uh, and then we've got disposal. Uh, again, uh, once materials have been used, uh, we now need to account for their disposal. So uh, the same categories all appear here. Uh, and if I add new, then I will be uh, measuring them in different ways. So for example, food has now come through to food waste. And so there's different ways of dealing with that waste. Um, the, we know that on shoots, there will be a lot of general mixed waste. Um, and so that is measured by <coughs> weight or volume, depending on whether it's going for recycling or landfill. So ideally, of course, I think people are looking to recycle their waste um, and they'll be sending it off in, in weight. So we are hoping that um, suppliers of uh, waste disposal for shoots or locations will be able to um, give this information to the uh, companies that they're working with and um, allow them to be able to fill out this data. So I think although there's a lot of stuff in this tool, it actually only depends on what particular area you are working in. So if you're working in, this is the last one, post-production, for example, um, the type of information that we're looking for uh, is actually quite simple. So we're looking for uh, the space name. So it's VFX, what country you're in, how many hours a day you're in that post-production suite. So you're in for eight hours and for how many days? So you might be in for 30 days. And at this point, we've got another option to ask about certified green energy. So if your post-production is running on certified green energy, it's carbon neutral, which is fantastic. So I'm going to uh, go back now. Uh, and I'm pretty much done. Oh, hang on. So there's a couple of things that I would like to show you actually uh, in terms of um, other things. So if I am in now as the advertising agency, I would like to show you what it looks like if I sign out and go in as a test user for um, the Wicked Production Company. So this would be what they would see, um, one individual user. This person has only been um, assigned to one particular project, and this is all they see. So the agency is seeing everything that they're working on across all sorts of different campaigns, especially because that person was an admin. This person is just an individual user, and they're working on the same uh, project that I was showing you before. They've got the same overview, 
uh, they've got exactly the same uh, input that they'll be putting into their area. They'll only be seeing their own activity forms. They won't be seeing the ones from the other company. Uh, the, uh, the information that they see from the other company is just summarized here in the top. Uh, so this is uh, the, kind of what they see. They see that um, the call ad agency are putting things into these three different categories. They don't see any other information, but they can chat to them through this message area here if they want to. Um, when they have completed their particular area of the footprint, actually, they can mark theirs as done. And then anybody else who's got an overview of things from this page will be able to see um, what areas are done, what areas are still needing to be completed. So I'm going to sign out and just go back to my um, example user. And I'm going to go in and just show you what a, a brand might see. So Chris Burritos are the, the brand, uh, the advertiser that are paying for all this work and who, who um, uh, you know, the reason why everyone are doing these projects. They've got a number of different campaigns going on for their uh, product. They can see in this case that they've got the same three um, projects within this particular campaign. And if I try and go down, there's no access to the calculator section. All they can see are these overviews of what um, all the different production partners have been doing together and whether or not it's, uh, it's been complete. So that is essentially it. <laughs> uh, oh, hang on, no, sorry. There's one other thing I want to show you. So I'm gonna go in uh, as my cool ad agency user. The admin area, if you uh, are an administrator for the tool, will be up here. And this will be where you'll change the company details and where you can um, add and remove users. So if you're somebody who's got freelancers who are working for you or people who are joining and leaving your company, um, you can give them rights to uh, view uh, any sort of uh, aspects of the work that you're doing through this administration area. And then there is also a tips and tricks area here too. Um, so this is where um, the videos are all hosted. Uh, so if you go down here, there's a, a long playlist, but these can be accessed through our website as well. So um, you don't need access to the tool to see all these videos. And then there's a uh, help text and glossary as well. So actually I'll show you our website. This is the Ad Green website. If you just go on here, uh, we've got various different uh, bits of information at the top. Here's the carbon calculator. Uh, you can calculate now. So that's the way of getting into the tool. Um, and you can um, see information about how to use the carbon calculator. So you guys as suppliers, this will be the place for you to come um, and have a really good look around. Uh, if you want to watch those videos, it's essentially what I've just been doing now, but much shorter in <laughs> two, like two minute um, rundowns. Here's all the um, a glossary with all the different uh, types. There's also access to the methodology, which is here. Um, if you want to have a really good look at all those different data sets. Um, and then there's some information about being outside of the UK. Essentially, we are a global tool. So it is available for uh, everybody globally, but we're just uh, basing ourselves in the UK to start off with uh, once we get going, because we are a small team and we've got a lot to uh, take care of at the moment. So we're going global um, when we are ready. We've got various things happening in the future. I'm just going to quickly show you, we've got some reporting coming on. So the whole reason for collecting all this information is so that um, companies later on will be able to access this data and um, create some reporting. So um, people will be able to look at um, different aspects of what they've been doing and generate um, reports which can be used company wide. And so that will be available to everybody who's using the tool, uh, we hope, but it's part of our phase two. So it's not available yet. This is just in my staging site uh, and it's up and coming, but it's the reason why we're doing all of this. After the first year, when we've collected loads and loads of fantastic data, we'll be able to report that against the whole industry um, and tell you all um, lots of hopefully quite insightful information about what you're doing. So I'm just going to go back. Uh, I'm really conscious of time now um, and show you um, uh, where to go next. So you can, I've, I've explained our website, but essentially that's what you would be doing there. Please sign up to our newsletter, book onto a training session if you haven't already. There's lots about the background and why we're doing all this in the first place. We've got loads more events. There's a big resources guide that's available on our website. Um, listings, creative energy, creative offsets, um, 
and obviously access to the carbon calculator. I think I am done <laughs> and I'm going to stop sharing if I can work out where all my Zoom stuff's gone. Um, and then uh, we can talk if Jen's got any questions. Yes, there are a few coming in. Thank you, Sophie. I'll let you get your brain back in a second. And just say all of those links, um, every, if you go to the website, weareagreen.org, um, everything is there. So you can sign up to the newsletter from there. You can find the resources, links through to creative energy, creative offsets, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and a few questions have come through. So I'll start with the ones that have come through on the chat, Sophie, and then perhaps we can move on to um, anyone in the, in the virtual room who might have one too. Um, David Sears is asking about, um, to do with the hierarchy of you know, different people. So as a reviewer, can I only see jobs that the administrator has assigned me to, or do I have a more general access? Um, it depends if you're an administrator or a user. Um, so all reviewer, all companies, whether you're a reviewer or, or a contributor type, will have those two user types. So if you are an administrator, you'll see everything. And if you're a general user, you'll see only the things that either one of the contributors has assigned you to or your company have assigned you to. I hope that makes sense. You kind of need to, to practically be in there to be able to see the web of how everything goes. And we do have um, both a video and there's in the glossary, there are some further details about the who's who because we're, we appreciate that we've, we've sort of brought some new terms into the world. Um, so um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we've, we've, yeah. we have got help text out there just to help kind of clarify who's who and therefore what everyone might need to be. Um, and it's, there are many large companies who are using this, who it's important that, you know, there's only a small number of administrators who see the overview of everything. But if you're a small company, you might be choosing for all of you to be administrators um, so that you can have, a, have an overview of everything that you're doing. So it's, it's very much a personal choice. And that's why we've made it really flexible. So I think people, different companies will just use it in different ways. Um, a question from Clara around use of this tool versus others or not everyone using the tool. So if a production company uses the ad green tool, but the ad agency doesn't. So those costs for post and travel, et cetera, can't be added in sort of what's what's the how, how might you account for that? And she's also asking a few of the bigger agencies use green screen, not ad green. So how do we get a full and accurate picture? <laughs> Again, it's, it's a personal choice. So this tool is available for uh, people to use in whatever way they want to. It is free at the point of use. So there's no reason for people not to be entering in the information and having a free account. Um, we are asking people to uh, join us as levy payers and levy collectors to help us grow um, what we can offer. And we would absolutely love it if everybody, if this became industry standard, um, and everybody joined in and, and took part. So yes, we do recognize that there's other calculators out there. Um, we've done really extensive research and we feel that this one is really seriously comprehensive and very tried and tested, certainly in, in the broadcast sector where we know it's working really well. Um, so um, by all means, um, use both or, or pick one. Um, and we very much hope that you would choose to use us and, and join in to, and being part of our data set. But there's definitely gonna be some conversations that are gonna be taking place now uh, between different companies and between all the different people um, on that kind of hierarchy and, and ecosystem um, of people saying, you know, we're using this tool, we'd love you to have access to that data, please join um, and please join in. Um, and that, that's the ideal scenario that we're looking for. Um, another question around sort of the, the process and that's if a production company is the first one to use the carbon calculator and they start a project and get everything sort of set up and then the agency wants to join later, what happens then? Yeah, that's fine. So all the data will just exist in the tool. So it's kind of waiting for um, a, a, the company who it, uh, to be connected. So we might find that production companies are building up quite a lot of data while um, other companies who are working with them, reviewer company types, for example, might be having conversations about how they set themselves up. So there's going to certainly be um, a, a process where um, there'll be some footprints that are in there that aren't attached to their brands, for example, um, until those brands have set up company accounts and then we can start kind of reattaching them, which is why you can go back into the project details or the campaign details at any time and, and reconnect. What I will say is that um, really we're looking for people. So in order for people not having to do things twice, it's really important that you 
um, make sure that you are the principal production partner before you set up a campaign. So there will be certain times when you'll need to get somebody else to set up the campaign for you uh, or the project, and then you want to join it rather than doing it the other way around. Some people I think will want to get a head start and say, oh, I'll set up this campaign and this project. And then you find out that actually there's a couple of people further up the chain than you that need to be having an overview of that campaign. So there's definitely going to need to be some conversations around that um, beforehand. And again, we're kind of here to help you. and We've set all that information out, but there's a certain amount of learning that's going to need to go in um, to make sure that this works for everybody along the chain. And in fact, another question from Eva about this is on a more practical level. If we fill in production office energy waste by meter, but there's more projects happening in the office at the same time, should we then split it by project? Yeah, definitely. So there's a bit of information in the help text about that that just says that um, there's when you're looking at production space, it asks you how many people are sitting at a desk for that production. Um, and so, yes, you could be sharing the production and then you'll have two people working on one project and five people working on another. And it will allow you to separate that out. But something to keep in mind when you are uh, putting everything into the tool is whether or not it appears in the budget for that particular project. So um, we know that sometimes there'll be company overheads, certainly for um, production spaces, where uh, that's actually out of scope for this tool. So we're only measuring what appears in this particular project's budget. So if you haven't got space is in part of your budget, it doesn't need to be included here. And again, that's something that we'll be growing into as we get into different phases. We're really hoping to, to kind of start getting some factors in for things that are in different scope areas and allowing them to be included. And that's one of the things about carbon footprinting at the moment is it is definitely a growing area. Um, and like you said, there's other tools doing different aspects of it. So this is very much based on the production area. Um, another question I've overlooked, sorry, Salma, is um, I've signed up and I'm still waiting for the request email that is sent to the administrator. No one has received anything yet. So what should I do? Um, <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. We have been inundated. Um, it's been really, really fantastic, actually. We asked people to pre-register um, earlier on um, so that we would, because we, we recognised that we were going to be in this situation. So we, we managed to get quite a lot of people in um, kind of pre-registered so that all their data is in the tool already but then there's been a big cohort who've just joined and there is just a little bit of process that we need to go through and that's because we do a number of uh, security checks to make sure that um, whoever is um, joining on the company's behalf has the is um is okay to be in the administrator role for example um and we need to double check that companies fall within the category that they have um, aligned themselves with so we have to be sure that people are a production company for example or a service company or an agency so there's just a little bit of checking that's going on and uh, like i said we're a small team we're working really hard to get through it so i'm sorry if it might take a couple of days uh, but you should have a response if you don't have one by monday by all means, uh, message us through our support at weareadgreen.org email address um, and it will get answered in, in time. But like I say, we just need people to pay the levy so that we can grow our team and give you lots more support for this as well. Yeah, this is a small team, but there is a there's a human being behind it all, so it hasn't got... Oh, yeah, <laughs> we're here. Automated we process. There's it's, people just, there. it's really, really exciting uh, that we've got so many people, but it does mean that there's a bit of a, a kind of um, a, 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 could be a couple of days wait to get you in. Yeah. Um, another question. So uh, starts with great job, which is nice. Thank you, Charles. Uh, so how is the data collected? Who's in charge? And a lot of the detail. There's a lot of very detailed questions to answer. How do we to be sure that the data is well collected? <laughs> Hi, Charles. And um, that is correct date. You know, it's correct. And we have people haven't just thrown random numbers in there. Yeah, well, again, it, that is down to the companies that are using it. And that's why we've set the structure as it is, because we're hoping that ad agencies, production companies and service companies will take that responsibility. So we've got a um, quite a, a very detailed data protection policy, which is available through the website, which everyone has to tick in order to use it. Um, and uh, that's how, in answer to the question about how your data is managed, it's done through our data protection policy. But in terms of how data is entered, um, and, um, uh, you know, making sure that it is viable, clean, uh, you know, good information. We're, we're working on uh, trust as, uh, um, 
which is what everybody has to do. Actually, later on, uh, one of the next phases that we have is going to be uh, a project certification. Um, and that is something that Albert offered to the broadcast industry. We'd love to offer it to advertising. Um, we need to go through a, a, a kind of, you know, quite a detailed process to get to that point. Uh, but when we get to certification, there will be uh, more um, defined information that we need to be really sure that we're collecting uh, clearly. But for the moment, um, we're not at that level. Although I suppose, Sophie, it's worth pointing out that footprints get submitted for audit and anything that's really yes. a, a big anomaly would be picked up. So if someone has put in slightly ridiculous data, like five people stayed for five years in a hotel or something, that's the sort of thing that would be flagged as that doesn't sound right. And, um, you know, again, there's humans behind all of this sense checking who would then come back and sort of say, is, is, is that correct? Or I think maybe a mistake's been made there. Um, so there is an element of, of checking out for anything that is kind of yeah very odd and is showing a big spike in one particular area that doesn't seem right for that project um but as Sophie says on a sort of more granular level we, we wouldn't know if someone's put in three of three paint cans were used rather than two that's that's got to obviously be down to the production itself but big big errors should be flagged and picked up um and yeah because there is a sort of again there's a human behind this checking things to make sure that uh, the data is as clean and accurate as it could be but the, the aim is is also a, a conceptual thing. So it's to get everybody in the mindset of measuring in order to reduce. That's why we're doing this, um, because we all need to think about the consumption that we are uh, putting into our productions and, and lowering that essentially in, in the, you know, the best way that we can and swapping things out as much as possible for renewable or recycled or um, hired you know, things that don't have a carbon footprint associated with them so that we can bring it down collectively. Which leads quite nicely, Sophie, on to another question around materials or re-materials. Re of time, Jen, sorry, because I think we, we said to, to finish at 1.15. Oh, I'm so sorry. I've just got so excited by it all. <laughs> no, I'm, excited. One I'm finish... actually happy to stay, but I do want yeah. to say that some people are needing to leave, I think. So if you do need to go, that's completely fine. Uh, and the recording will be available. But why don't we stay on for a couple of minutes, Jen? That's fine. We'll stay on and just finish off these last few questions, absolutely. And then, um, yeah, please do feel to... Um, feel free to drop off the call. And thank you ever so much for everyone uh, for coming. Um, this question around materials. So we're only calculating rough materials that, is, that, that are being purchased, you know, the, the, the raw material itself, um, as opposed to items that are already built. Is that correct? Sorry, Sorry. say again, I was distracted. So, <laughs> just, um, the question is around sort of reuse, I suppose, and materials that are already in existence. So the tool itself is only calculating for the, the raw materials that are purchased for, say, wardrobes or props, rather than items that are already built. Is that yes. Yeah, so if um, if I understand the question correctly, if you're hiring something, then there isn't a carbon footprint associated with it because it's not being bought for that particular production. Um, in terms of scope, um, we are uh, not accounting for the production of items in the factory um, and kind of behind everything. We're only accounting for things that are being consumed as part of this particular production. Because you could you could hire a light and then it will go back and it'll be used again and again and oh, again. That's what you mean. Then it's the power that the light is using rather than the light itself. Yes. Yeah. So you so there will be line items in your budget, such as lighting hire, which won't appear in the tool um, because they are a higher. And then the um, but you will be needing to account for the electricity that is used. I think Eva, I've, I've, I know you asked that question, and I think you might still be a bit confused. So please do jump on if you want to. Um, yes, yeah, sir, because I didn't see uh, an item, and maybe it was too quick for me, but uh, if I buy some props uh, that is like built from different materials, where, where will I put it in then? Um, so you would need to put them in into the categories depending on what they are. Oh, I see what you mean. Like um, if you if you get buying a table or something like that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Or a yeah. wardrobe or anything like we are buying a lot of stuff. So yeah. That are combined materials already made. Yes, I see what you mean. Then that would be actually fall into disposal. Okay. Um, because there isn't any items at the moment, is there, for um, no. uh, individual items that you're buying? 
um, yeah, it would very much come under whether or not you're you're disposing of them or whether they're going on. If if there's if it's a kind of closed loop, you're buying it, but then you're able to pass it on, and it's not being disposed of, then that's fine because there's no carbon footprint on your project necessarily. Although it's a cost, it's not a carbon footprint because it goes on to mm-hmm. continue its life elsewhere. Um, but okay. uh, yeah, if you're then throwing out an entire kitchen, and then you've got a skip higher that's got all of that stuff in it then that will be uh, some waste associated with it yeah because uh, there was another question if i'm purchasing this and then i donate it are you calculating this as well yeah so there is a category for donation uh, but as far as i'm aware it actually has a zero carbon footprint so what we're w- wanting to do is to um uh, collect that data because it's really useful for us to know that there has been um something that's taken place it happens to have a zero carbon footprint, but it will be part of the data yeah. because that process has happened that's associated with that project. Yeah, okay, thank you. But these are the types of things that we would love to hear. We're really, really interested in hearing um, feedback actually, and um, because we want to grow the tool. So we're constantly looking at the data sets that we've got. And if people are telling us that they really want to account for all these individual items, then that's something that we can consider. I think you could imagine it's so massive, that, yes. um, you know, it's quite hard for us to make sure that uh, everything is accounted for correctly because a table could be all sorts of different materials and it'll be by weight and you know all those different things as well. So it's, it's quite tricky to do. Um, so yeah, if you can hire it, <laughs> that's great. <laughs> and you can send it back, <laughs> you don't need to worry about it. Brilliant. Um, Charles, I see you say you've got a lot of questions. I'm also conscious of time that we ought to probably be wrapping up soon. Um, if you have one more you want to ask now, please do. And then if not, very, very welcome obviously to email them across and we will do our best to sort of answer them. Um, and we are we are starting an FAQ section as well, where obviously the most frequently asked questions will be added to that list as well, so that other people can <laughs> the questions that we're getting from from all the different groups. Um, so yes, if you have one more question, Charles, please go ahead. <laughs> I know I don't have I have like ten questions really, so maybe we should have a, a talk by email. But you know, uh, we uh, with Sequoia, my company in France, we developed a, a carbon tool also for production companies. Uh, here in France, but the methodology that we are using, it's absolutely not the same. So uh, it's very interesting to, you know, to cross the different uh, directions that we are taking. Um, because for example, uh, Eva had a question about um, uh, purchasing and we are calculating in France, everything, uh, every carbon impact linked to one euro that has been spent on a production. So um, that is quite another methodology, uh, but it's not like there is, to, it's not too different. They are two. Uh, they are both to be combined. So, um, so this is a thing that we are working on, um, more based on euro, and we are going to um, uh, to to try to work on the emission factors that are on um, on material and stuff like that. That was my question at the beginning, like how to do, how to calculate, how to collect all the data, because in France we have so much problem to the. Uh, the data collecting, the reporting of the data. So um, that was just, that's not a question, but just a, a thought. So let's yeah. uh, have a talk. Uh, it's uh, definitely a growing area um, uh, of this kind of, um, like you say, data collection and also the data sets that are available for us to use as part of our tool. But essentially, I think I, I know that this is really fascinating. And I, I, as the project manager, I spend lots of time looking at the methodology and, and kind of thinking about this level of detail. But then I also just try and expand myself back to because really we're looking at reducing waste and energy consumption. And so if we can do that as a whole, then the amount that we're actually needing to measure will just shrink. Um, and so we and and also we're all working together on a common goal. So it's brilliant that you're using other tools, and that's that's great. And I'm you know again we're very happy to work with different people who are working together towards the same aim. Yeah, and Charles, I'd say if you do want to drop any questions over, um, the info at we are adgreen.org um, email would be the best place to do that. And I think yeah, one of the team would get back to you. Um, uh, I've talked to Joel already a few times by email. Uh, okay. So yeah, I will, I will email you guys. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you. But uh, congratulations for all this work because I, uh, 
I've been working on my calculator for like two years and I know it's very hard work. So <laughs> yeah, well, good, good work. Well, thank you. Yeah, we're definitely <laughs> pleased it's out there now. We'll get people using it and then we'll we'll start to grow that data and, and grow the conversation as well. Yeah, lovely. All right, well, I will um, bring this meeting to a close. Thank you again, everyone for coming. Um, and as Sophie says, please do use the tool, please do feedback. Um, let us know what you think. It is always a work in progress. This is iteration one. And we hope to sort of keep adapting and changing it and making it the most usable, workable tool for the industry um, that can really drive change. So we'll say goodbye. Thank you very much, everyone. Wonderful. Thanks, everyone. Have a great Bye. weekend. Bye.